Howdy, folks. I wanted to go outdoors and have a nice long day out in nature, but it's been pouring buckets all day long. It's like a little window of opportunity right now. If I want to go out in a very bleak, drizzly, and gray day, I can do that. I think I'll uh, stay here and finish this guy off. <laughs> Chapter 9. Advance warning, it's about five drinks in here, but they're spread out real nice. I'm going to pour the first one out, even though it isn't yet uh, come up. Uh, we're, uh, remember the records that Lim High wanted, uh, what is it, Ammon to read? Well, now we're reading those records. Chapter 9 is the beginning of the records of uh, King Zenith, uh, Limhi being his grandson. They had the wicked King Noah in between, if you remember from, I think it was Omni. <laughs> I, Zenith, having been taught in all the languages of the Nephites, and having had a knowledge of the land of Nephi, or the land of our father's first inheritance, uh, footnote says, uh, B.C. 200. So that's when this shit's happening. See, we've gone a little bit further back into the past. So we can hear that story that we've already heard and heard again. But now we can hear it from uh, the horse's mouth, more or less. <laughs> And having been sent as a spy among the Lamanites, that I might spy out their forces, that our army might come upon them and destroy them. <sighs> Wait. I mean, how do you pass yourself off? I mean, they have a skin of blackness, and you are white and delightsome, uh, <laughs> Zenith. What the fuck? Is this how you guys pulled the Mountain Meadows Massacre off? You know, just wash your war paint off in the stream later on and instantly you're Mormons again and not Indians? <laughs> but when I saw that which was good among them, because everyone's got a little good in them, if you look for it. Even Glenn Beck, I'm sure. <laughs> I was desirous that they should not be destroyed. Pussy. <laughs> You're just not sounding very Old Testament to me, bro. <laughs> Therefore, I contended with my brethren in the wilderness. Uh, for I would that our ruler should make a treaty with them, but he being an austere and bloodthirsty man commanded that I should be slain. Uh, but I was rescued by the shedding of much blood. <laughs> you guys, shades of Monty Python's Life of Brian. <laughs> We're going to kidnap Pilate's wife. So are we. Let's kill each other. <laughs> Fail in our attempt. Because we can't get along either. For father fought against father, and brother against brother, until the greater number of our army was destroyed in the wilderness. What a clusterfuck. <laughs> and we returned, those of us that were spared, to the land of Zarahemla, to relate that tale to their wives and their children. And yet... I, being overzealous, to inherit the land of our fathers, collected as many as were desirous to go up and uh, to possess the, the land, and started again on our journey into the wilderness to go up to the land. But we were smitten with famine and sore afflictions. Maybe God's trying to tell you something, guys. Because, you know, all... Natural disasters are really supernatural if you look at them through the right lenses. <laughs> yeah, maybe God didn't want you to go there. Oh, we're not going to look at it that way in this one instance, okay. Uh, for we were slow to remember the Lord our God. 
See, you should have kissed his ass before you went on your journey. Nevertheless, after many days wandering in the wilderness, because they're out of magic numbers, <laughs> we pitched our tents in the place where our brethren were slain, which makes a lot of fucking sense. Maybe the enemy came upon that camp, you know? Or, I mean, maybe just bad mojo. I mean, fuck you. Hey, move all those bloody bodies out of the way. We're going to camp right here. <laughs> Uh, which was near to the land of our fathers. Oh, wait, I already poured it. God, it took that long! All the way up to verse 5. Mm. Oh, that's so nice. Mm. Warms the belly. And... It came to pass that I went again with four of my men into the city. This time not as spies. I'm still wondering how he pulled off the spy routine when he's white and delights them and, and they have a skin of blackness. I mean, Ted Danson got in trouble for that shit. <laughs> Although Pleasant Preacher did it in a video to commemorate Martin Luther King and you just shake your head and go. That's just his way of showing love and compassion for the world. Uh, uh, that I might know of the disposition of the king, and that I might know if I might go in with my people and possess the land in peace. <laughs> Maybe they'll take a string of uh, shiny beads for the whole lot. And I went in unto the king, and he covenanted with me that I might possess the land of Lehi-Nephi, and the land of Shilom. And he also commanded that his people should depart out of the land. Wow! Just like the Golden Heights, or not. <laughs> And I and my people went into the land that we might possess it. Sounds like a sucker play. wonder what the catch is. And we began to build buildings that, and to repair the walls of the city. Oh, you could have our slums. Sure. Yea, even the walls of the city of Lehi, Nephi, and the city of Shilom. <laughs> previously named, so you didn't need to name them again. And we began to till the ground, yea, even with all manner of seeds, with seeds of corn and of wheat and of barley, and with knees, N-E-A-S, and with shurum, uh, shum, S-H-E-U-M, Ever heard of them? And with the seeds of all manners of fruits. And look how cool it's going to look. <laughs> That's so Byzantine or something. With a little Aztec thrown in. <laughs> and we did begin to multiply and prosper in the land. Now, it was the cunning and the craftiness of King Laman to bring my people into bondage that he yielded up the land that we might possess it. <laughs> Dumb shits. Therefore, it came to pass that after we had dwelt in the land for the space of twelve years, that King Laman began to grow uneasy, lest by any means my people should wax strong in the land, <laughs> and that they could not overpower them and bring them into bondage. Now, they were a lazy and idolatrous people, these Lamanites, Therefore, 
They were desirous to bring us into bondage, that they might glut themselves with our labors uh, of our hands, with the labors of our hands, yea, uh, that they might feast themselves upon the flocks of our fields. Therefore, it came to pass that King Laman began to stir up his people that they should contend with my people. Therefore, their being began to be wars and contentions in the land. Great plan there. For in the thirteenth year of my reign in the land of Nephi, away from the south of the land of Shilom, when my people were watering and feeding their flocks and tilling their lands, a numerous host of Lamanites came upon them and began to slay them. <laughs> Too bad. <sighs> and to take off their flocks and the corn of their fields. They won't be needing them. Guess I'm not going out now. <clears throat> Yay! And it came to pass <laughs> that they fled and that uh, and that were that they fled and that were not overtaken. I think they left a word out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, no doubt fixed in a later edition. <laughs> Even unto the city of Nephi, and did call upon me for protection. <sighs> Final drink, I believe. Yes, last one. Unless I missed something in my pre-highlighting. Uh, mighty fine. And it came to pass that I did arm them with bows and with arrows. God, they kind of go together. <laughs> I can see him trying to throw an arrow without a bow. And with, uh, with swords and with scimitars and with clubs and with slings. And with all manner of weapons, which you could have just said, and the rest would have been unnecessary, and is unnecessary. <laughs> which we could invent. <laughs> and I and my people did go forth against the Lamanites in battle. Yea, in the strength of the Lord did we go forth to battle against the Lamanites, for I and my people did cry mightily to the Lord that we might deliver that he might deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. For we were awakened to the remembrance of the deliverance of our fathers. And God did hear our cries and did answer our prayers. Why do they need so many? Just the prayers of one person doesn't reach any. But if you get a whole group together, uh, and they all join hands, it's like, pow! That mountain just fell over, because we wanted it to. It was in the way, blocking our view. How come nobody does that? Because you, if you got faith, you should be able to do it, even if it's just a mustard seed's worth. I bet I got that much. <laughs> uh. And God did hear our cries and did answer our prayers. And we did go forth in his might. Yay! We did go forth against the Lamanites. And in one day and a night, 
We did slay 3,043. How about that? They got a number. All right, come on. Go out and count. I know. I know. We got to start providing some numbers in this book again. I mean, besides 40 and 12 and 7. <laughs> yeah. 3,043. Wow, that's right up there with Book of Chronicles and shit, you know, for one little encounter. <laughs> and we did slay them even until we had driven them out of our land for now. <laughs> and I, myself, with mine own hands, did help to bury their dead. And behold, to our great sorrow and lamentation, Two hundred and seventy-nine of our brethren were slain. And that's it for chapter nine. So, moving right along. And uh really don't have much to say about this, except it is a... It's a flashback. Within a flashback. <laughs> Within a flashback. Ingenious. Peace the fuck out, folks. And I hope you're having a better day than I am. Bye. I'm having an okay day. It's just the weather sucks. I'm having a great day, actually.